Amen. For every correct heist, robbery, kidnapping, whatever it is to work, there must be someone on the inside. Heist 101. Get someone on the inside. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Lord then said, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the beds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The Bible says concerning that scripture, the, most, the word for the Lord in that place is Elohim. It's a masculine plural form of God. Elohim said, let us make man. He was referring to the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Something led to that. There was a build up to that. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. And then verse 2. And now the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. We found out from research and scriptures that between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 was a huge passage of time. And if you read 1 and 2 very quickly, you begin to ask certain theological questions. The Bible says that God is not the creator of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Therefore, what happened between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2? And theologians, I don't have all the time, but thank God for your training institute. And Pastor Emmanuel and his team are doing a great job. You will get all the basis. But permit me to submit to you that Lucifer, iniquity was found in him. And he rebelled against the, the government of God. And he was cast down with a third of the angels. And the Bible says that darkness was upon the face of the deep. Whenever the Bible wants to describe to you what is responsible for a situation, it's a close follow-up of the situation. It said the earth was without form and void in verse 2. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. In my early years in Christianity, I thought the darkness there represented an absence of light. Until we began to study further. And the Lord began, and the Lord said, let there be light. And the Bible says the light appeared. And he saw it was good. From that point onward, the Lord began a creative and a redemptive work. Restoring back the earth. Because what you call creation is actually the recreation. And he started from day two. And began to create A and create B and create C. And when he got to day three, he said, let there be lights. Plural. And then he began to specify. He said, let there be the great light to govern the day. And the lesser light to govern the night. And I started asking, what did he call forth in verse two, in verse three? When he said, let there be light. Rather, who did he call forth? John chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was what? Talk to me. Come on, people. Okay, give them the scripture. They didn't read it recently. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word. Let's go now. The same was where? The same was where he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were how? Without him. That was a final submission for me. So the light that was called forth in the first instance was the creative ability of God in the person of Jesus. Because the triune God had to be involved in the process of recreation and the rebirth of the earth. 
the Holy Spirit went to take inventory. Because the Bible says that there was darkness upon the face of the deep. However, the Spirit of the Lord brooded upon the face of that void. That was the third person in the Godhead taking an inventory of the level of chaos that darkness has brought upon the earth. And he went and made a report. And God said, it is time. We need to do a reconstruction and a restoration. And the God has set out to earth. But God called forth his creative self in the person of Jesus and in his shaded creation. And when they were done, the Bible says the heaven is his dwelling place and the earth is his footstool. God knew that because he separated light from darkness, there was an eternal plan on how to deal with darkness. Darkness was not thoroughly dealt with yet. He knew there was a tendency that darkness would want to come back to corrupt the handiwork. Here on this terrestrial earth, there was a conference. He called the triune God together. I said, let us put an insider amongst them. Let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. Let us have a representation here on earth. So the idea of man was an inside job. God looked at man. He said, go. And the Bible says he created man. And he gave him what we call the mandate. He said, be fruitful. He said, let, he said, let them have dominion. I can stay there all day. But because that is not my focus today, we'll run through it. He said, let us, have, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, so that he can not only push back, not only make sure that darkness does not recede back, but push back the frontiers of darkness and expand the kingdom and the territories of light. Let us make man that they might have dominion. You know the story? Do you know the story? Who was created? Adam was created. And then he was put in a garden. And the Lord, the Bible says the Lord put of himself into Adam. So act one, sin one. The insider in this scenario was who? Was who? Was who? The role, uh, I hope I'm not teaching your church how to commit a heist. But the role of an insider is to be in the community as though he's one of them. However, is to represent the place that he is from. Let me speak to the choir. It looks like someone cuts it there. So the role of an insider is that your essential makeup, you are not one of those you are amongst. You are here to enforce the agenda of the one who placed you amongst the contrary situation. But Adam did not know what he was, he was bequeathed with. You know how he was beguiled by darkness. And darkness in its customary way found its way to corrupt again the, the, the works as it were. But the Bible says, blessed be the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the earth. The Lord God himself in his infinite mercy had prepared the last Adam. So Acts 2, sin 1, enters the insider, Jesus the Christ. Come on, let's read the book of uh, John chapter from John chapter 1 together. Is anyone in church this morning? Say, say praise God wherever you are. Oh, Jesus. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, verse 3a, And the Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. So in Jeremiah, the Lord's script, who will go for us? Is he, uh, the prophet Isaiah said, who will go for us? Who shall we send? And the son said, I was in the beginning with you. This time, let's go and deal with the issue of darkness one time. And Jesus was dispatched to earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it began to say. And in their case, the God of this world had blinded their mind. I'm not interested in that. He said the minds of, their, of the unbelievers have kept them from seeing the light. But this is, this is my point. From seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 
God mirrored himself, wrapped himself in, in, a baby's, in a baby's body, and he put an insider amongst men. So that we cannot say to Christ, ah, you don't know how I feel. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who is not touched by the feeling of our infirmities. We cannot say to Christ. He said he was born in a cradle. He, he grew like every one of us. But yet he carried the seed of redemption. God, Jesus then came and began to say, oh, I'm very mindful of time. So but let's read the book of John. John chapter 1 from verse 1. Just read with me. We have read it before, but we'll start from verse 3 this time. In the beginning was the word, okay, verse 3, yes. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Then verse 4, let's go quickly. Did you get that? Did you see why we can assert that Jesus was the light from the beginning? Right? Come on, talk to me. Can you see why we can infer that Jesus was the light from the beginning? The Bible says that in him was what? And the life was the light of men. You see, you see, by the grace of God, some of us can just make you start jumping. But I want you to catch this revelation before you jump. Go, we will pray today. Something will alight on your spirit. I'm not praying a prayer. I'm telling you what God has reassured us of. That in this, in this service today, he's unlocking destinies by the opening of the spiritual eyes of men. That you might understand that here yeah, you are the inside man. Let me not preempt myself. Let, let's go. Where, what verse were we? Verse 4, right? And, in, and the light, verse 5 now, and the light does what? And the darkness. So when Jesus came, Jesus became an embodiment of this light. He came to show us how it is done. Do you understand? There is a darkness problem on earth. Lucifer is on the loose. And man has given the sea of O, the legislative right to be God here on earth to Lucifer. As a matter of fact, Lucifer came to Jesus at the, at the Mount of Temptation and said to him, Fall down and bow to me, for the keys of this kingdom has been given to me. God did not give it to him. Adam did. He gave it to him at the garden when he said to him, uh, eat the fruit and he ate it. The moment, that moment he ceded his right to be the dominion factor here on earth. But Jesus said to him, thou shalt bow only to one. So each time he walked through the streets, he said to them, I, while I'm on earth, I am the light of the world. So let's see how Jesus manifested his light. The Bible says that indeed, let's, let's, let's look at, go, can we run, can we run on, on, that, on that? And the light shines in darkness. Verse 5, let's go. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not. Let's go to verse 6 now. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll pause on John. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 4, the word gave, the word gave life to everything that, it, that, was, that was created. It said in him was life and the life was the light of men let me read it from the amplified version in him was life and the power to bestow life and the life was the life of men so jesus came as the firstborn of many creation as an insider on this great inside job he did not sit from heaven to legislate light he had to come sit with us and then grew in the ranks and set off the redemptive move of the whole of God and saved us with the intent that we will come to the intent soon that he will become a life giving spirit. Oh, someone did not catch that. So the first Adam was a living being, but the last Adam became a distributor of life so that you will begin to know soon. That you are playing under a different set of rules. Anybody that looks at you and sizes you by what they see, they are sorely mistaken. For the Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 19, and this is the verdict. The light has come into the world. When Jesus showed up, 
The Bible says, John chapter 3 verse 19a. And this is the judgment, the indictment, the test of which men are judged. The ground for the sentence lies in this. The light came to the world. You know the confusion in dark realms when Jesus was born? They could not dimension it. All the astrologers came together. Ah, we see a star. What is it for? Some said he was a king. Some said he was a prophet. Some said he was just somebody who is meant to be not noble. They did not understand. Jesus was God's joker. Kalamataida. And Jesus said something. And I want you to hear. Enter Acts 2, Acts 2 sin 1, Jesus. But he said in John chapter 9, verse 5, while I'm in the world, what? I am the light of the world. For English majors, what does that mean to you? There is a time frame for that verdict of Jesus being the light of the world. He said, while I am the, in the world, I am the inside man. But now, I quickly go to the, the one that brought me here. You as the inside man. I love that one. Thank you, Pastor Ayo. You as the inside man. John chapter 1 verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to do what? To become. To become. Hey, hey, don't, don't rush to children. He gave them right to assume, to become, to be crafted into. That, that when he said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He was about to depart. He began to tell them, Aki, you are the light of the world. Uh, 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 Bello, you are the light of the world. At that time, he had seen salvation in view. He began to let them understand that everything I, Jesus, was here on earth and more. You have become the inside man. You see, the kind, the kind of people that will emerge from this mountain, from this place. Aye, Pastor, Pastor Emmanuel. Men will give testimonies here that ears that hear it. You know, newsrooms will come and interview because it will sound unbelievable. You know why I have the confidence to say that? There is a crafting that God is deliberately crafting on your inside in the season. Jesus said to them, he said, as many without any form of prejudice, whether you are from a home where I've seen people, uh, my, 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 my birth was circumstantial, that is even the more reason. That is even the more reason. You know, you know as terrible as rape is, even a child born of that kind of circumstance is a child of destiny. Do you know what it takes to conceive a life? Do you know the forces that come together to ensure that the life... I have, my wife is a medical doctor. We have a lot of medical doctor friends. One of our friends is a specialist in, is a specialist gynecologist. You know, when we talk about the process, the process of helping people with assisted, um, with assisted pregnancy, you will know the mystery of being born and being conceived. How can you ever assume that that kind of mystery can be a mistake? God forbid. Hear me, child of God. When Jesus was then leaving the earth, he breathed the same thing that was done in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. But this time, he did it in such a way that he replicated himself in a multitude of people. And that's how we are gathered here. Are you with me now? Are you with me now? All right, let's, let's, let's track on very quickly. Salvation was another example of an inside man. What are we doing with this information this morning? The Bible says that in the book of John chapter 14 verse 10. Believe it or not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Jesus was saying to them, you see me, the encasing you see is Yeshua Amashiach. But the real me is I represent the entire Godhead. The triune God is here. At some point he began to tell them, now the kingdom of God has come to you. Ah! So that Jesus became a portal of transaction to humanity. Do you get it? 
I'm going to center on Jesus and I will flip the script on you very quickly. And it will happen so quickly, so you better keep all the things I'm saying about Jesus in your head, in your mind. The Bible says in John chapter 14 verse 10, look at the amplified rendition of that. He said, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? He said, wait. The words that I say, I do not say on my own authority, on my own initiative. So I I am here. It's my mouth that you, you, my lips that are moving. But the one who is inspiring the things I'm saying to you is up there. That's what Jesus is saying to them. So the moment Jesus transferred that right that we might be Christ here on earth, the same became our reality. That here we are on earth. We have become the light of the world. What does that even mean in the current day Nigeria? What does that mean for somebody who lives in Ikeja, Lagos? That you are the light of the world. Let's see what Jesus did with the light. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 30 to 31. Uh, help me very quickly with that one. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, <laughs> the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet. And the Bible says, and he healed them. 31. The people were amazed when they saw the, the, the mute speaking. Say with me. What did they see? The mute speaking? The, 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 the what? The, the, and, and what next? And, and what next? What did they do? Now you know why it's an inside job. For every insider, the, when you know your purpose is accomplished, is when mission of base is accomplished. You begin to point back to the man who put you there. Hey, can, can, can you hear me at the back over there? So, the Bible says then, in the book of John chapter 14 verse 12, And he that believes in me, the works that I do, ha <laughs> ha, Shall he do also? So Jesus was saying that what the mandate has not changed. Darkness is still within this terrestrial space. But what you represent now is that I am in you. I, I wish I could illustrate, but I don't have the time. I am in you. When you see, when they see you, they encounter me. I am a place of transaction. I have, you have become a place of transaction between the world and me. And Jesus is saying, if they want to meet me, all they need is for you to show up. And hear me, child of God, not to show up in church. Not to show up in church. Not to show up for video. It's for you to show up. The Bible says, who lights up a lamp and puts it where? Under a bushel. How? A city on a hill, how can it be hid? Luke chapter 17, verse 20. The Bible says there that the kingdom does not come by words. Give me that scripture. Give me that scripture. But my, my emphasis is in verse 21. Now, when he has asked, was asked by the Pharisees, the kingdom of God would come. And he answered them, the kingdom does not come with observation. Hear how the kingdom comes. Now we just say, see here, see there. For indeed, ah, where, where is it? Where, where is it? Where is it? The portal of the kingdom is in my, is in, is within me, Jude. So whenever I show up, man of God, you are meant to be principality by yourself. Jesus was saying, I bring a new command that the kingdom of God is entrapped within you. Do you know that in one man was trapped the mystery of sustaining an entire generation? Joseph. And he was not yet in the full manifestations of the, of the Christ as now. But the Lord entrapped within his system. So God can fold the whole of Lagos and infuse into a man. Because he changes it to a form called the spiritual state. And that's why they, 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 don't, they don't take... They don't, the people that do not descend good, they don't understand us. Because in this little boy... In, this, in that little boy, in that little girl, is the Lord will embed everything 
that he needs to bring the kingdom to bear in his generation because he changes it out of solid states. He changes it out of mass. Uh, come on, can I talk to your intellect a bit? He transforms it from all those states and he puts it in a state called the spiritual state and he traps it on the inside of that man. And then he gives us the legislative tool of faith that we then begin to issue forth the kingdom. He said, the kingdom is not here or there. Where is it? Please point. Please point. Please scream it. Please scream it. Come on, talk back at me. The kingdom is within you. So not only are you an inside man, the kingdom operates from inside out. So a baby was born. They were expecting a king. Do you understand? The Lord begins to operate in some metaphor that the human mind cannot. So when they see you now, they say, is it not that small boy? That small girl. That's how they begin to, they begin to try in the office. Uh, you understand? Uh, that supervisor. Do you understand what I mean? He just begins to, uh, hey, sit down there. Hey, get up. And you too, not understanding that the kingdom you carry is inside. Yeah? The, you are just fortunate to have submitted your CV before me. And they gave you a role before me. But you don't know who I am. Hey, yeah, dada. You don't know what I carry. I carry kingdom. I, ca I talk to your neighbor and say, I'm carrying kingdom inside of me. My early years of working, a gentleman looked at me and said, you will not last here. <laughs> uh, I'm very gentle and meek, but whenever you come across, you cross the line of the integrity of my God. Hey, that time, it's not about me anymore. My meekness is aside. I begin to tell the Lord, Lord, hear what he said. If only he knew before he came to the organization, he should have asked question. How was this boy hired? Do you understand? Some people were sent. Some people were sent. They are an insiders. They were planted. The guy did not do his research. There are people you don't threaten. Do you know what I carry inside? I carry kingdom. That's why we don't need to... I, when, I, when you see believers that, that are arrogant, they don't know. Because in this kingdom, the way up... Are you with me? <laughs> Someone got it. He, you know, have you seen a rich man saying before, do you know, don't you know I'm a rich man? Any man that starts saying in his house, eh, I'm the head of this home, you are likely not anymore. Are we together? So, when you have an understanding that you are a representation of the portals of heaven, that you can legislate, and a person, his career ends immediately. Do you understand me? You are careful how you say things. I, I remember going, closing, I just went to his desk. I said, God, forgive him, but he doesn't know what he said. Before I left the organization, before, before the way things turned within months, it was in his interest that I became his henchman. Do you understand? You see, when God will be dispatching angels to visit people at night on your behalf, they don't know why they are behaving differently the next morning. Do you understand? Is somebody hearing me? Let's come back to the message. And Jesus said that the kingdom is within you. The kingdom of God in... Paul was talking to the Corinthian church in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. He said, and the kingdom of God is not in words. I'm beginning to come to the crux of the matter. Because at this time you will permit me. Is there anybody who is helping me here? Yeah. He, he said, he say, the kingdom of God is not in words. How is it? How is the kingdom in? Ah, ah, ah. A lady ran to me after service a couple of weeks ago. Ah, Pastor, Pastor, I'm the one that you were talking about. You were talking about. That came, I came, came in with a skin infection to service. Eh, the thing was even itching me. Why? Immediately you said it, I looked. The rashes were gone. I just, I just said, ah, this, is, this is done. It's permanent. You know, so she was expecting a long prayer. Or she was expecting me to be surprised. And this, this is not arrogant. When we were saying it, is it me that said it? 
I wasn't in doubt whether there was a person like that. But say, man, they don't, sometimes they don't understand. I'm not trying to impress you. Some of us don't even like to be here. If you ask me where I want to be, I'll probably be praying off this morning. But hear me, child of God. I carry in me the kingdoms of the Lord. And when I show up, the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of our God and His Christ. All of us want to show up in church. No. There are several other mountains. Right now, service that is going on. Ah, some of us, some of the people here. It's not if not that God is helping us to have a good time here. They wonder why this pastor carry me away from first service. We're, we're dealing with the issue of kings and priests. So, in this kingdom is a combination of everything that existed in the old order: the priesthood, the kingship, and the prophetic. It's a, tra- it's a triple manifestation all locked in in you through Christ Jesus. And you want to live your life ordinary. One time I was very ill as a young believer. I said, pray, oh God, don't let me die. I felt like the angel wanted to slap me. Die. So what are you dying for? All the investment we have been making on you, what dividend have we reaped? Even if you die now, we'll send you back. Who send you back? How can you carry entrapped in you? Let's hear what they said about Jesus. The Bible says everywhere he went, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That everywhere he went, he was a distributor of the potters of God. He did not only give to men so that they can become. He gave to them and he gave them access so that they can become fellow distributors. So that when you come, the life of God causes a transformative ability. Our kingdom is inside out. I don't know what you are facing. It's a narrative put together so that your life can begin to shine forth the light that God has decreed concerning you. So, the first insider was Adam. And the last Adam was an insider that introduced all of us to become inside men. And heaven is placing a demand, Pastor Emmanuel, on everyone here. Where is the kingdom manifesting through you? Let's stand on our feet very briefly. I am independent of the government. I'm independent of any other man. I'm independent of the systems of this world. I am, there is, there is an inside system that, that, that I am wired with. Can I just hear a few people just praying in the spirit for a bit? But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, in the name of Jesus, Today, what is your commission? As you go out from here, you know that everywhere you go, anyone you encounter should know that they have met with heaven. You see, it doesn't matter how much you have. You see, when, when we get canal, it's when we begin to benchmark things based on canal, canal benchmarks, man of God. Because who would have seen Joseph in the prison? You pass a judgment on the gentleman. Now this guy is just a common prisoner. In less than 24 hours, the kingdom that had been brewing on his inside for 17 years, or 13 years, from when he was 17, right? The kingdom manifested in a day. So, the Bible says, no, no man after the flesh. Therefore, today I want you to pray a prayer with me. In this season of darkness, I assume my kingdom mandates. I take on my role as an insider in this business. And I say concerning my life, everywhere I go to, I plant a portal for the transmission from heaven here to the earth. That the kingdom of this world shall become the kingdom of our God and of His Christ.
Rede de 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 de